The Mike Mayo's Lunchbox is brought to you by Corvina Seafood Grill in Boca. Hold the mayo. It's time for Mike Mayo's Lunchbox. Find out what's being served with Mike, Defo, and Luby, the only show that covers food, sports, and the proper maintenance of your car. And now, a man who had the distinction of having an entire health clinic named in his honor, Mike Mayo. I want the flim flam sauce with the awesome bay with Shafafa on the side. Good afternoon, again. And for the second live show day in a row, we're doing a day evening double header on the lunchbox. Uh, I'm exhausted. I was up on a plane at LaGuardia Airport at uh, about uh, man four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. But uh, it is my pleasure to welcome back to the lunchbox. We're at a new location, but with an old familiar face, Eddie Pozzoli, uh, operating partner here at Corvina Seafood Grill, Boca Raton. How are you, Eddie? Welcome back. Doing, doing great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming out and uh, making the trek up to Boca again. Oh, it's uh, no bother. It's See, a lot. You are a smart especially man. Especially after your day of traveling. You were smart. Yeah, but he was a smart man in how he scheduled it. He's like, okay, I've, I'm going to be on a flight all day. Let me go to Corvina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking happy. We're here. It's happy hour. Yep. It's wine Wednesday. Mayo is a smart man. He's gotten here by by his brains, not just his mouth. I tell you what, I I ninety five North can be sometimes a little tricky, especially around the evening rush hour. But it is it is a complete picnic compared to the roadways of New York City, yeah. uh, except at four in the morning. That is a good time to get around New York. Otherwise, sure it it's gridlock central everywhere, which is crazy. So it gives me an appreciation somewhat for South Florida, and especially for the weather here. And, of course, the hospitality business and the restaurants here. Uh, I love coming out, especially to see you, whether it's at the other place, Prezzo. But uh, talk a little bit about your association, affiliation with Corvina uh, and how it all came about and what's going on here. So a lot of great, a lot of great things going on right now um, with the restaurant, with us as a company, with, you know, our amazing employees that have been with us ton of growth happening um long story short you know we we have our two prezos um that you know we brought one prezo i guess back from the dead and in, in a in you know the easiest way to put it uh open the second one both restaurants have been doing great um and i have you know i have some friends that came and opened corvina um as equity partners and and you know long friends long family friends and they reached out to us and uh this past summer and wanted a little bit more of a local influence mm -hmm. on, on somebody the who knows the lay of the land because <laughs> <So, exactly. laughs> you know, boca can be a little bit uh, let's say difficult terrain to navigate for outsiders i was talking with yes. eduardo before and uh you know they they come coming from dc oh. this this group it was uh, <laughs> it was it was difficult and, and um you know, you you have to you really have to have a solid foundation in a South pulse. Florida. Uh, yeah, I mean, you Boca have to have a finger on the pulse of the community to, to know what's going on. And and you know, fortunately, I was born and raised here. I've been in the business now in South Florida for I've more more years than I want to even admit. Yes. Um, and you know, for those who don't know, you know, him, him and his family had a long running Italian restaurant up in Coral Springs, and now Eddie. Uh, is branched out. He's a young hustler. He's a go-getter. He's a guy that uh, I really appreciate people in the business who are like coming up young, hungry. They want to get involved. They want to, uh, I guess, bring concepts and good hospitality and good food to more people. Right. That's, that's really what it's about is, you know, we, we truly enjoy what we do. We, you know, the greatest, the greatest thing that happens or that we see what happens, what comes out of our business is, is watching, some employees that have started with us, you know, whether it be busboy, dishwasher, whatever, ex like kind of come through the ranks and whether or not they stay in the restaurant business or do something else like that, I feel is one of the greatest gifts that we've gotten out of the restaurant business outside of meeting a ton, you know, obviously a ton of guests and a ton of great friends through it is truly seeing like people grow and blossom, whether it's staying in the business or being becoming a pilot, you know, we've got somebody that was working with us at Tavolino's that he's gone on. He's now a private pilot and he's doing phenomenally. And mm -hmm. like, you know, stuff like that just really makes it all worth it. 
the industry um, breeds success. You're kind of like a college football coach, you know, the, the family that like, you have people who become proteges, mm -hmm. you teach them life skills and discipline. Yeah, a little bit and, everything. It's not always about, I mean, yes, we're serving food and drinks, but the restaurant business is like a microcosm of life. Yep. Like different stuff happens in the restaurant every single day. It's not like you're coming doing the exact <laughs> same sure. thing. An every so, day is different. You know, figuring out like, how do we get past this? How do we get through this? You know, right. how do we do this? Some, this person called off, like, being able to kind of bob and weave and, and figure out what works, what doesn't work, how to make people happy. You have, you know, on any given night, you have hundreds of people right. to figure out what works or what doesn't work with each of them. Yeah. I, so, I give you props because yep. obviously it's a challenging. Um, OK, restaurant business, hospitality is always challenging because you're trying to please everybody all the time, which is not humanly possible. But you guys can come close. It's yeah. like in the newspaper business. You can't sometimes get everything right. If you got 500 facts in the story, you get one little thing wrong. That's the thing you hear about. Oh, yeah. Same thing in the restaurant biz. I know you all can about put that. Out 200, <laughs> you, know, you have 200 covers in a night. There's that one, two top. That thing's got a and little screwy. And then the they're night. on Let's Eat South Florida and Yelp. And it's. And, and look, and people have the right to expect, you know, a, a good experience high and you have the high standards. Um, but people have to understand, like you said, some days people get sick and they call out and they give no notice and then you're scrambling and then things get. And, and it's the way that you guys can recover. Uh, that is really the, uh, I guess, defining measure. But meanwhile, one way I always recover, Eddie, is you come to a place at happy hour, you yes. get 50 percent off. That's and it. I see Luby is hogging He's some of the fisting. cocktails there. <laughs> What's I going on here? I, was that? Good? I think I actually got that. confused who was on the flight all day, to be really honest, because I, I wasn't flying from New York's LaGuardia Airport to Fort Lauderdale today. But uh, Ashley, one of the great uh, bartenders here, uh, put out some of their fantastic drinks. And that's another thing. They not only look like they taste great, and we'll get into them, but they look great. They look mm -hmm. a lot of fun. You know, you have the very well-known Pisco Sour. Uh, they do a spicy watermelon margarita. And this is my wife's favorite drink. So, hi, babe. Uh, I'm drinking on the job uh, a espresso martini, which is a very popular drink, but they don't always look like this. This is fantastic. It's with the proper three espresso beans yep. up top there. Yep. Um, but, you know, I've got the Pisco Sour. Eddie, I guess the whole concept behind here was obviously seafood, fish forward, a lot of great local fish, which I love to see nice. because mm -hmm. some of these chains that are coming in, they build themselves as seafood places or prime seafood. I, I don't want to take any shots, but yeah. I am taking shots because <laughs> it bothers me when you go to a menu, which see a menu and there's no local fish. There's no stone crab. There's no, you Especially know, with the you, fish we have here. Yeah. And well, it's I mean, hello. <laughs> Why go anywhere else? <laughs> so you guys are featuring local fish and not only that local flavors, you got a lot of dishes that have a, South American spin on it between ceviches from Peru and you have that Brazilian oh, wow. seafood Brilliant. stew, right? And then you have some of the cocktails to match, like mm -hmm. a Pisco Sour, right? So, you know, the, the team here, um, when I, I, I can't say enough good things about the team that has been here, you know, from, from the inception. They, they have this opened when like two three uh, years november ago? of 2021 okay um they all you know they came down from dc God, they had some it's been three years so they, wow that's crazy yeah i was yeah they yeah. had some concepts up up in dc super successful um and chef jeff who will be on here shortly you know he's jeff tunks is jeff name? tunks yeah, yeah and... he's he's got a phenomenal pedigree for mm -hmm. you know and and the, his, his history in the business is unreal like unmatched he's he truly is an amazing chef um you know the team that came along with them they they their ideas were phenomenal they truly care about what they do they put passion into everything they do and that's that's what drew us to wanting to partner up here and yeah. and making it happen because like we love the idea we love the concept we know that seafood works in south florida especially right. as fresh as we do yep um we we knew it'd be a home run to to for us to jump in and make it happen so yeah and i came out here probably about a couple of months after it opened and i had a really nice meal and i was really blown away by the you know the brazilian the cheese bread with the, the tapioca, Ooh, tapioca flour yeah, yeah the yeah. tapioca oh. flour so it's not it's it's i guess gluten friendly it's you can oh nice you, uh, and uh again those were really nice and that's kind of a more of a you know south american touch and then some of the other uh, dishes between you know had remember i had some grilled oysters here that were just outstanding i assume that's still a backbone we, of the menu or... yeah we well we have the fresh oysters uh, i believe we did pull off the 
the grilled, the charbroiled oh, oysters, no. I believe. Okay, because I thought I saw somebody was in here recently and posted another picture of them because that that was good. But hey, raw oysters, I'm always down Big for fan. that. Yep. Big yep. fan of raw bar items, and of course, I think you also still do the. Uh, there's some scallops. Uh, I remember there was a oh, scallop. Yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pictures of these scallops. They look ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the kind of things that people can find here. Sushi. Sushi you know. you've added because mm. everybody in South Florida loves sushi. And that I guess that's the kind of touch that you bring is like say, hey, uh, you know, we've got this. Why not why not do this? Right. You know, yeah. This is a lot of restaurants are adding some sort of sushi program to their menu because it truly is a great thing for people to share, yep. enjoy, and it's healthy. And why like we have this super fresh seafood, so why not why not use, use some sort of sashimi nigiri or sushi roll with it? Um, it, and it works great. It makes sense to me. And so, um, again, they've been around November of 21, so it's two and a half years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've kind of come along and are helping them, you know, again, with the local market. What are some of the things that I guess uh, you've tweaked uh, since coming on and, and that you found that the community has responded to? So, so we started a couple of different new promotions uh, to kind of just get the name back out there again, uh, because after being open for two years, you got to start, you got to turn, keep or try yeah. to figure out a new way to turn the wheels again to get, get some more attention to us. We know there's a million different restaurants opening every different month in South Florida. So um, what we did is we, we did some uh, really aggressive promotions. One of them being tower Tuesdays, which has taken off like more than we can even <laughs> imagine. Is that like tower as in seafood, seafood tower? tower. So every, really? okay. every Tuesday all night we do half off seafood towers. Really? That's a great idea. Cause and, yeah, I have always, I'm not, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I have a buddy who owns his own establishment and he, they do a seafood tower and a buddy of mine, we were eating there, went to order it and he shook his head. He's like, it's great for us because it's like, I don't know, like 80, I don't know, whatever it was price. It was like the highest price thing, mm -hmm. but he's like, I don't understand why people get it. It's a lot. And no one ever really it's gets impressive. into it. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing to look at. Mm -hmm. But I knew as a critic, when I was at the Sun Sentinel, I'd always say, well, it's kind of a tourist thing. It's like a item. lot. Uh, but, you know, it's, when you give it half if off. If you're going to do half off, more people will get into it and you can treat it as an appetizer. Exactly. And people will get into it and, and it's go a, after it's it. It's a phenomenal deal. And what what's really cool about it is it's almost like one of those things where if you see it there, oh, you're there, gonna eat it, and there, right? You're gonna be like, oh, I, I should get one of those. Or you walk into the restaurant, you see one on every table, you feel like you don't want to be that table that doesn't have right. it. Right, yep. FOMO. Yeah, exactly. Fear so you're missing out. You know, you, you maybe you have a normal night where you sell five towers. Or fear of missing oysters, as the case may be. Um, but yeah, no, and that's a great idea because. Not only do you give people a taste of something that might be, you know, a higher end item that maybe they think they can't afford and then they'll try it, but maybe they'll say, oh, wow, I really like that particular item on yeah. it. The, uh, I guess if you have some shrimp and then yeah, the next time they'll the get shrimp a shrimp cocktail. cocktail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it, it kind of leads them to the next time they're here. If it's not on a Tuesday, they'll get some other items that maybe individually or maybe they'll just say, hey, it's so good. I'll pay full freight this time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and it's a, it truly is a phenomenal deal. It's not something that we, you know, brag that we make money on on a Tower Tuesday. But it's a lost leader. Exactly. You, gotta, you, gotta, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's it's we think we think it's phenomenal. And I love the view of, you know, seeing towers in every table That's yeah. on a Tuesday night. It's it's a really it's a what are, it's a what are some feeling. of the because I noticed there's a, you know, a, a, a like billboard a out front yeah, so, that has okay, every so, week night of the week. So yeah, let's we've run got we've got some quick. action going on here. Yeah. So Wednesdays we do Wine Wednesday as we do with our other half restaurants. Off. Half off yep. a bottle of wine? Half off bottles. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And then 25% off bottles over $100. Right. Wow. Okay. So the premium bottles, you're still getting a good break. Yeah, that's a and nice then cut. the uh, other ones, the you know, that's everybody that's was 50% off. <laughs> on. And then Thursdays, we do our ladies' night where we do complimentary uh, bubbles for ladies from seven to nine. Oh, wow. We've got uh, that's at the bar. We've got a. Do they have to order a certain, uh, like a, a dish or an entree? No, we just. We they could just, just show flat, up and yep. you'll You're get them. Giving uh, them bubbles. Nice. Yep. Wow. And That's we have deal. live entertainment on Thursdays. So a little dancing going on, some action at the bar, just to kind of, you know, make make it fun. You know, give that, give that fun vibe. Um, Saturday is something that we started actually to bring a little bit of youth and, and energy into into the weekend nights. Something called Santorini Saturdays. Mm. Ooh, I love Santorini. So, so what Chef did is, That's a is great call. he put together a phenomenal Greek menu that that we do every Saturday. 
uh, along with some Greek wines, Greek cocktails God, with some ouzo and nice. Um, everybody, uh, yeah, yep. just drop that oh, in there. Speaking of Greek, there we, we got go. Alex right here. Oh, nice. Hey. Um, Yasuyamas, all good. Okay, we've got some apps coming in, and this is going to be spotlighting the happy hour menu. But again, getting back to the the Saturday, the like the Greek Isles. Uh, exactly. Theme. So everybody yeah, dresses in white, you know, like oh, uh, nice. like you're in the yep, islands, and, yep. and uh, we've got a guitarist here playing playing the coastal Mediterranean <laughs> music and. And it's a it's That's a lot of fun. It's something different. And it, and it goes with the it goes well, to South Florida. <laughs> it goes with the environment because the inside decor is very light mm. and bright. It does yep. feel like a kind of a, a Santorini vibe exactly. inside. Yep. Uh, if you you know we're we're parked outside today because it's such gorgeous weather, and we've got to we're take advantage to of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you have a beautiful patio, patio out here. You've got the indoor outdoor bar. The way it's cut is kind of like both. It serves both inside and outside, and this, I'm sure, is where the happy hour action unfolds every Monday through Friday, 4 to 7 p.m. So, so just everything on the happy hour? It's, no, it's, a, it's almost everything, but, but yeah. uh, we, we've, got, we've got a fair amount. What do we got? Happy. Like, Okay, so again, so happy hour, half off the specialty cocktails, including premium liquors and beer, $3 off wine by the glass. This is Monday through Friday. Four to seven, and this is something you don't see every day, especially in Boca. Weekends included four to six p.m. Saturday yep. and Sunday. You can actually get happy hour really on a weekend afternoon from four to six. That I say. So Eddie Saturday Pizzoli you could do the happy hour, and then is, you will be also doing the Santorini. Yep. That's Saturday. Saturday after that. Yep. Oh, that's we'll go right into it. Oh, we got Chef right here. That's some forward thinking. All right, I'm gonna slide over now, and we're gonna get uh, Chef Jeff involved and then we're going to go over all these lovely uh i guess these are all ten dollar bites now right yep. going on for the uh happy hour again four to seven weekdays four to six p.m monday uh saturday we're and all sunday family here, chef. and uh we're going to get a headset on you uh, chef jeff and uh welcome you to the lunchbox i'm mike mayo pleasure to meet you i've eaten your food before it's yeah, really good in, yeah yeah, yeah all Tyler, good think, yeah it was a while. Oh, it was a while. He <laughs> remembers your <laughs> order. Jeez. I know. And that's scary. <laughs> Chefs are like, I thought I thought my ex-wife was bad remembering everything. But that's pretty I've impressive. I those myself, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I remember those scallops well. It was delicious. Yeah, we I guess. some ceviche. I love the Brazilian, uh, the tapioca the cheese. The yeah, yeah. All yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Welcome to the lunchbox. And Great. Uh, how's it been going? Welcome to Corvina. It's been yeah. going good. We've had a good season. And uh, course it's hard to beat this weather today i mean this is the epitome of living in boca this is it and uh, again for those who don't know where corvina is it's 110 plaza real south mm -hmm. right it's tucked it there's a little bit of a maze down here when you go south of palmetto park uh road it's not that hard to find gps to find. has it it, it was, was easy to find. okay because the first time i was here it hadn't yeah been it was a little bit more difficult GPS, I think, but yeah. now again plenty of uh, on street you know, parking, meter parking, valet, garages, valet, valet, free, valet, free valet. Oh, really? So okay. you can get here, and then once you get here, you're going to find this. What did you prepare for us uh, This is some of our uh, happy hour offerings. We have a pretty extensive menu, considering I think we have like 12 or 13 different oh, things. Wow. We obviously focus on seafood. Uh, we've got to the very left uh, in front of you, we have our um, spring rolls. It's a, it's a, a shrimp and rice vermicelli spring rolls with a sweet chili non plus sauce mm -hmm. for a dipping sauce. And we serve it on a lettuce wrap. So a good way to sometimes to pick them up with the lettuce. And sometimes there's I'm like a holder. And, that. and that's our sort of traditional way for a dipping sauce. And then next to that, you know, we're going from Asia to a little bit of uh, Latin America. We have some fresh ahi tuna taquitos. So they're miniature little corn tortilla shells there with uh, some ahi chopped tuna, really simple olive oil, a little bit of salt. And then we top that with some um, house-made guacamole, some pickled red onions, a little bit of cotija cheese. And a chili to arbo aioli on top of that, and wow, then that's a we, lot of stuff going in. It that is for a small package. bites, yeah. yeah, a little bit, but there, it's definitely it's in the same tune that we use from our sushi program. We use for that, and then speaking of sushi, our sushi chef made us. Uh, we do a, a simple salmon maki, uh, spicy salmon maki uh, to a, a roll for happy hour with some uh, natural white pickled ginger and wasabi. So all these items are ten dollars on the ten dollars, wow. and then we have our in the middle here. We have our house smoked. Um, uh, a fish dip, which is very popular in Southern Florida, obviously. Uh, we do it sort of Waldorf style. That's so what I was going to say. I see some raisins. I see some almonds. Yeah, right? so actually it's the traditional walnuts, Waldorf walnuts, salad is yeah. walnuts, yeah. Uh, celery, uh, apples, and grapes, which is all infused into our, our house smoked uh, mahi. A little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of horseradish, lemon juice, 
and then we make an everything bagel chip or crisp to go along with like that. A bagel. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we take some uh, we take some local bagels. We slice them very thin on the slicer. We put a little bit of butter on them, and then some everything bagel seasoning, and bake it to the crisp. And then in the middle, or next to that, we have our sort of deconstructed. It's a crab rangoon dip. Ooh. So traditional crab rangoon oh, is sort of made. Top. Oh wow! It folded into like a like a you know anelote type shape. Something, but we put them into a gratin dish. Wow. And it's got um, cra claw crab meat, a little bit of um, lemon juice, cream cheese, sour cream, a little bit of ginger. And then we serve that with some wonton crisp and then some sweet Thai chili. So you can sort of build your own mm. um, chip with that. And then to the very right um, in front of me is um, sort of our shrimp nachos. We lay them out flat so each nachos get an equal fair amount <laughs> of cheese. That was sort of my pet peeve with those, 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 those stacked mm -hmm. up ones. And then we have a little bit of shrimp sauteed with some cumin, some sour cream, some mixture of uh, jalapeno, um, some pepper jack cheese, and some cheddar cheese. And then we have some house uh, uh, pickle chili, some Fresno, and some jalapeno chilies so on top. you really are spanning the globe here with the flavors and we varieties. We are. A little, a, little, a little Latin American, and I think a little bit of Asian and stuff. And then we have some other stuff, too. We have, um, we have some – we have like 13 items. We have some – traditional cheeseburger sliders that we do uh, for people who are wanting the non-seafood mm -hmm. fix. Um, we have uh, some flash roasted cauliflower with a teeny sauce. So we have the vegetarian check that box there and with that and, and everything else. So uh, it's a good variety and very, very popular. So And you're still going with, you know, you still have your ceviches and ceviche, things on the regular right, menu yeah. for so, the South American. And that's flavor. actually on the on the Happy Hour menu too, or ceviche. So like I said, we have 12 or 13 items. So we have a pretty extensive. And then we do some specials. We you know, and over uh, St. Patty's Day, we actually had a Reuben egg roll that we served okay. for happy hours. <laughs> Very popular in this part of Boca. But, uh, <laughs> and it, yes, it is. <laughs> Give, uh, I guess uh, people just uh, a little bit of your background. How did you get started in the biz? And you, again, kind of cut your teeth in the D.C. area. What's been? Yeah, I've been, it, a, I've been this in a long time. I, I went to CIA, Culinary Institute of America, graduated in 1983. So okay. I just had my 40th anniversary. Oh, wow. Day. You yeah. are. Yeah, oh. I'm a, a OG. Guy, yeah, I am a long time. I'm from Dallas originally. We ended up working for Dean Faring, who has a good reputation. He was one of the sort of the godfathers of sort of new southwestern cuisine. He's got his own restaurant still at the Ritz Carlton in, in Dallas. Which and, one was that? Is that uh, well, he was at the mansion on Turtle Creek for many Creek. years. That's the one I was thinking and of. And then that he's, was had the he's had Farings for the last probably 20 years at the okay. Ritz Carlton down there. Yeah. Uh, end up going um, I, up to, I was I was a, sh a, a hotel chef at the Lowe's in San Diego for you know several years in the early 90s. Ended up going to New Orleans, was a chef of the Windsor Court Hotel nice. there in New Orleans nice. for about and three was, or four years. He was just there. Yeah. I love and then Orleans. ended up going up to opening in D.C. Um, and I, I've had several restaurants. We had D.C coast originally and had a Cadian, which was sort of a creole cajun restaurant had tin pins so some of these are influences of my previous restaurants going from modern latin american at saba to modern contemporary asian at tin pin Acadiana, some of louisiana roots um and then end up one of our investors or one of our people that we did insurance with um ha had a house down here and that's wanted to how it always usually works <laughs> somebody yeah. has a winter home yeah, that, that's right and down here you know, and, and so flown down and they're saying and, let's open a restaurant and, you know we were in the throes of COVID at the time and you know having three different having have restaurants in three different jurisdictions maryland and montgomery county washington dc yeah. downtown and the northern virginia yeah. and yeah. under the restrictions you know decided to you know like a lot of people have sort of migrated to, to, to florida, florida where, where it was a much looser and as it open for out, business mentality business a bit. When you have outdoor seating, it really yeah, was, it was does. the place to be. It was great. And I tell you, I really like it. I just the the quality of life, especially now at my age, a little bit. I sort of, you know, it's it's ironic how much of my clientele base that I've known in the DC market have second homes down here or third right. homes type thing and, and know our brand and our and our food from from up there. And um, I live seven minutes from here, so a door is door. So now you don't go back and forth. Or do you go, I go up back to and DC forth a minimal, bit? but I'm pretty much full time here. You know? Right. So pretty much full time. So you're here. overseeing the kitchen. And again, I nothing but mad respect for a chef who's been in the biz for over you know four decades. Yeah. Who's still you know on the line. Yeah, I still so my this passion. This guy does so, not uh, leave the line. Yeah, he is, he is right. watching That's, every uh, dish. I enjoy out. the craft still. Yeah. definitely. Well, so. I, and you said something I was actually going to ask you about. So you beat me sort of to it is. I think it's cool that you were in such vastly different markets from right. Dallas to New Orleans to D.C. Well, now that's, to that's our, our first restaurant we called D.C. Coast because I'd worked on the Mid-Atlantic Coast of D.C. previously, and I worked on the West Coast in San Diego and the Gulf Coast in New Orleans. So we sort of brought those three distinct coastal cuisines and, uh, you know, availability of different types of, of, of 
you know, cultures of food, especially down in New Orleans, and then, you know, all the species of West Coast fish and Gulf fish and East Coast fish. And, and we do that here. We, you know, we change our menu daily. Uh, we're bringing, oh, really? you know, we're trying to source the, the most sustainable and freshest fish. And I, I, I mean, what a great area down here with the local swordfish and golden tile and mm-hmm. barrel fish and mm-hmm. yellowtail snappers from the Keys. My, and, my, you know, and so you can really, I'm really enjoying the proximity of how close we are to the actual source for some of the seafood. Right. So and I was mentioning earlier, like, I don't want to mention any names, but something maybe <laughs> that opened up nearby that also has a... Uh, branch downtown that people love because the service is nice and they have beautiful build outs they build themselves as prime seafood and yet when you look the menu you see south african lobster tails faroe island salmon right you see things from uh that well let's say leaves a big carbon footprint and maybe for somebody like me that wants to see that fresh local bounty yeah uh featured you've got it here well and- we do a mix of all i mean I, th- I mean i'm a big fan of Faroe island salmon i think it's a sustainable product that's really high end but you know, I think you got to focus on all the different species because, you know, that's and I think when we first opened there, that was really an underserved niche here. So was I really surprised because people think about Florida, think about the Gulf Coast, yeah, you know, the you Keys think grouper, you think and stuff. Snapper, and you I think- don't think there was that many great seafood restaurants down here. I think, you know, and then I thought I thought it was our niche that we were, you know, we were able to have a, a great raw bar program. Uh, we're going to have a great sushi program and then we're doing a daily catch. We're changing every day with seven or eight varietals and stuff. I think is really, really, like I said, a, a, you know, we can't hard to find, you know, besides some of the fry houses down in the keys and things yeah, like that. Some of the more have, honky tonk places. Yeah. Where right everybody has comfort fritter, smoke fish dip and, right. you know, yeah, the, the, yeah. the key lime pie. It's like the trilogy. But oh. to find it in a higher end place where you can come out and get a little dressed up on, on a weekend right. Right, and sit in a nicer dining room. Um, yeah, it's it's nice to see uh, so, you, you know, guys like he's getting on you know every couple of days we're getting a full swordfish delivered here. Yeah, I'm Which fortunate I'm buying from a, a guy named Vince uh, Vince Palmer. He's got third wind, so he's dealing with a lot of local boats. You know, yeah, we're doing good. We're nice. Getting, so whatever he has, direct. right? We're getting golden tile out of the Stewart area and stuff. Love and, the golden you know, tile. Yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorite. I think it's an underutilized, underappreciated fish. I think there's sort of a cult following down here. Of course, hog snapper. I was going to say, you know, you yeah. know, all the different type of some mutton snapper, lane snapper, nice. yellowtail snappers, you know, the groupers and stuff like, like that. Um, but, you know, I, and I personally pretty much order, cut and manage all the fresh fish here. And oh, I know wow. what effort that takes in. Because, so I'm sort of leery when I go out to eat because I know what it takes for us, what we are doing to keep everything exactly. fresh and stuff, you know. So, so what, do you, what are your thoughts on because it's funny. We're, I don't know if you've heard yet. Yeah, you've been here a while, but he's a part of a group. He sort of founded a group called Let's Eat South Florida. My fiance is part of the same group, so <laughs> okay. she's so she's, she's a big social media group. Some people are you guys have exploded to it. now. You have like 140,000, almost 150 at this point. Oh, wow. I mean, and yeah, you know, I started off as a newspaper guy, and I did a lot of different things. Ended up uh, at the buffet line as uh, wait, the food she, critic. She also and, likes Dateline. She saw you on that Dateline betrayal. Oh, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> people still see that. They replay it, and that was that murder case. <laughs> right. The, yeah. Scott Rothstein firm, a horrific, uh, you know, thing. But so you were doing I crime was, reporting back then. Or, or, I was, yeah. uh, I did it all. I was a sports guy, sports reporter and columnist, news reporter, pol- politics columnist, uh, and then I got wise in my old, you know, older years and right. said, "Why don't I just go out and get paid to eat?" And, yeah, uh, that was pretty good until uh, the time came with COVID, and I took a buyout, and now I've been kind of been able to stay in the game. Right, and I try to. It's like herding cats. That group. I tell people all the time, I love spotlighting the virtues of the business and spotlighting some of the great people like Eddie, like you, Jeff, the people who have been, you know, they want people to have a great experience. And what I try to tell you people on the group is if something (laughs) is a little bit off, tell somebody right here in front of you. Right. And they'll try to make it right because that's what the hospitality business is all about. It's hard to react a a night later or something when somebody goes home and a couple, two o'clock in the morning and starts doing the (laughs) the anonymous texting or the anonymous (laughs) uh, morning posting. That's right. Yeah. And I always say, what do you want me to do about it? It's like, say something at the time and you'd be surprised. People are afraid of confrontation. But, you know, if somebody says that, there's no need for confrontation. If a fish, you know, is is maybe overcooked to their liking if maybe they didn't specify at the beginning that they like it on right. the rare or medium rare side. I mean, do you take offense to that or you try to handle it? No, that? I think we, I mean, at my age, I mean, my my skin's got pretty thick by now, you yeah. know, and something like, you know. So, so it's like, my waistline. Yeah. Got real thick. <laughs> you know, and I, I think sort of that's the beauty of, you know, we, you know, we have obviously some chef composed dishes and we like to not do substitutions and modifications that 
what I really think is great is that, you know, we have this list of fresh catches where they can pick their fish. They can pick four or five different accompanying uh, sauces and their side dishes sort of be create their become their own chef, knowing that the fish is going to be impeccably fresh and seasoned and cooked properly. And then they can pick whatever sauce they think matches best for their dietary preferences for that piece of fish. And same thing when it comes to their side dishes. So they're sort of doing their own self -com composing here and stuff. Yeah. Yep. And so that helps us a lot, uh, you know, with a with a with a very fickle clientele that anywhere gets. But, you know, and I don't want, <laughs> so me, I don't want to profile. Well, you don't well, want to you don't want to offend uh, anybody. No, exactly. But let me just stuff. ask We're you: the hospitality the industry fickle is the best way to describe South Florida. So let's say compared to As the crowd in D.C. or suburban <laughs> Virginia, or, you know, right. suburban D.C. In San Diego. <laughs> to the to the client, does the clientele here maybe have let's say more discerning and demanding in terms of. Ah, asking for modifications or if something can be done a certain yeah, way. Yeah, I would have to be honest. Uh, yes, I, I would think so a little yeah. bit, I think. And, you know, and, and some of, you know, Boca has got a reputation about maybe, maybe a little bit more of an older clientele also. Yeah. And then the people, when they get older, have some dietary health restrictions, you right. know, so they Which want to understand lower yeah. sodium or, or things like that, of course, and stuff. And I think that's why, you know, fresh seafood is a great natural choice for that. Yeah. And I think, you know, for example, our the, the bread service you mentioned, the pot cajo. Um, it's, it's, it's gluten free. So it checks a box right there instantly and, and being delicious. able to, and you know, most of our catches are all gluten free. They're all simply grilled, you know, on the plancha or the char grill, extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of sea salt, parsley, very simply done, but really relying on the freshness of the seafood and our sourcing yeah. and our purchasing. The seafood is the star here. It's Scorpina. And so I think you, so I think you fit into uh, your, your, you know, very approachable to a lot of people at that right. aspect because of that. So. Now, let me ask a quick question. Uh, the fish, um, uh, Smoked the, fish dip. Right. It, what kind of fish is it? Because now marlin it's, it's, is no longer allowed. Said mahi, mahi. We're doing mahi. mahi. Yeah, okay. we're doing mahi. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that. that's. Uh, I'm going to dive into that in a minute. Yeah. First, I'm going to. I can't resist this little taquito. No, nice. Yeah, those are powerful yeah. little those bites really there. Those. Nice. Uh, that's. Uh, those. Did you say that was ahi tuna. I'm going to. Ahi number one sashimi quality tuna. Same nice. tuna we use in our sushi program. Oh, ahi tuna. So oh, and then it's got a little pickled onion on top of doing house, some some cotilla cheese. I'm gonna cheese. spare you the hideous sight of doing the big bite where I just usually consume well, that's, something. Well, that basically is almost that though. Yeah, right? so, <laughs> are you encouraging it? I, you got to do it. I would it. go it's all in, maybe, all right. or maybe maybe at least two thirds. You know, in. the other thing I do is like the crunch thing, this ASMR thing, which is called. Oh, I like the crunchy thing, but I'll do that for the uh, spring roll. Right. Uh, I will go in with this. I'll do it all in one. You can't. I don't want to do so. Ah. There you go. Oh, wow. So then you get all the textural components there. You know, you got a little bit of sweet, savory, the thing. You got the pickled red onion there and stuff, you know, so. It's finger licking, boom. <laughs> yeah, and it's good. It's a compact little bite, but the quality of fish that we use is, is top notch. Melts in your that. mouth. Yes. And it's got that, you know, I love when you have the crunch contrast with right. something that's really smooth and silky. Yep. So. You pretty much nailed it on that. Well, one. I'm pretty much. You, know, you see, I I think there's texture plays a lot of importance in yep. food. I mean, you know, you just you don't want soft on soft. You don't want crispy on crispy. You know, you really want to have that contrast and stuff. And and we serve a lot. You know, these things are meant to be shareables. You know, which is a great thing about happy hour. You know, people are at a high top or you know too deep at a bar where they can reach over someone and grab a, th a third spring roll or a second slider or a piece of sushi or make your own crisp here. So everything here is pretty much meant to be shared and mm -hmm. to interchange with other people so that you're not tied to like one appetizer yourself yeah. that you're you know change you're sharing that it's happy hour it's sociable yeah. it's Man, everyone so like, you know in. we just got this new community table in the back here so which is a great eight to ten top we got a couple more high tops on order so people can do that same kind of dining out here for a happy hour where you're sort of standing and reaching and talking and socializing at the same time when you're eating. So and speaking of that, is it uh, singles friendly or like solo diners? I know it's sometimes there's a topic on the group that people, you know, that if they're alone, do they feel comfortable just coming out here, grabbing a, a seat at the bar? And, oh, yeah. We got a lot. So, you know, we, yeah. we're, we have apartments and condos near us. So uh, what we get a lot is people that, Want to you know, like, quick bite. yeah, come down for a quick bite. Maybe they're bringing their dog for a walk. They want to come grab a drink at the bar. And, and you know, the, the bartenders here, Maybe you meet a new friend. I was going to say, Ashley, Ashley sold me three drinks. I mean, yeah. I, I was like, okay, Ashley. We actually do a lot of cooking for the dogs here a little bit. Actually. Yeah. It's sort of nice. funny. It's, it's, I, I sort of made a joke about it. I sort of, sort of, this is the apex of my career now. I moved to Boca to cook for rich people's dogs. <laughs> but, the worst thing. But, 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 but ironically, my fiance retired from the alcohol business after 40 years, and now she she walks dog for a hobby and a living. That's funny. So I thought maybe we could open our own industry down the road and she could walk the dogs and I could actually cook for that. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you know, it was like similar in the newspaper business. Like, you know, the, the hot, 
top echelon would be at the Washington Post or New York Times, you know, writing for the movers and shakers of the country. I was at the Sun Sentinel. I wrote for everybody's, uh, all the high power politicians' mothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're remote working. They're all down here now, too. So, oh, right. yeah, that's that's true. True. so you can't, you can't pretty, pretty much specify your career to a certain proximity or destination in that country now. Oh, so, you know. Jeff, can you stick, can you yeah, stick around ask you, for another segment? Because we yeah. got to take a break. Sure, yes, why not? got to do some business, but I want to come back. I want to eat that Waldorf fish dip with the mahi uh, with the everything toasted bagel. It all looks good. Fantastic. I'm going to go out with a bite of the it's the uh, shrimp and shrimp the rice like noodle spring, spring roll. roll. I'm going to do a little not a big bite here. We're going to go with the ASMR. We're going to talk whisper and hopefully get people uh, having a sensory <laughs> overload uh, overload here. Where we're going to go in for the crispy bite. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He weirdly gets I, into it. I almost, fell, I, just, I almost fell asleep. He gets yeah. super <laughs> into it. <laughs> I had a sensory overload. There. Totally appalled. Yeah, yeah, I'm I super I into it. That's my favorite part about it. Yeah, we'll take a break on the lunchbox and be back after these words. For Gilbert's 17th Street Grill, you know me. I love family run places with quality food at fair prices served with passion and pride. And that's why I love Gilbert's. For more than a decade, Lenore, Beth, and Richie Gilbert have been serving up the best burgers, wings, ribs, salads, and desserts. It's a fast, casual spot. Everything prepared fresh to order from an immaculate open kitchen. They're at 1821 Cordova Road in Fort Lauderdale in the Cordova shops just south of 17th Street. Open every day but Sunday. One of my favorite burgers in South Florida. Big, round, juicy pucks of 100% Angus beef. Char grilled to perfection. And don't miss the sweet potato fries on the side. They're legendary. Go to Gilbert's. Feast and be happy. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. When I'm looking for some wicked good food for a wicked good lunch, there's only one place to go. That's Wicked Cheesesteaks in Fort Lauderdale. It's at 4824 North Federal Highway, just south of Commercial Boulevard and across from Holy Cross Hospital. My friend Brian there, he will hook you up with some really tasty treats. They've got cheesesteaks just like the best you can find in Philly, along with lobster rolls, because that's where he's from, Maine originally. And they have wings and pizza and everything you want to have a really good good time wicked cheesesteaks they're open every day but tuesday check them out online wickedcheesesteaks.com tell them the lunchbox sent you if you're looking for a great place for steaks seafood and more go to tropical acres steakhouse and butcher shop it's at 2500 griffin road in dania just west of i-95 in the airport they've been there a long time since 1949 that means they're doing something right You'll get old school along with great value for tremendous service. Of course, you could also go into the bar for happy hour every day, four to six, and they have great value all night long. Also a butcher shop that's open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. except Sunday. The dining room is open every day at 430 except Sunday. Go to Tropical Acres. Tell them the lunchbox sent you. Fish, a sophisticated setting. I'm talking about Corvina Seafood Grill. It's at 110 Plaza Real South in Boca Raton, just south of Palmetto Park Road. It's the place to go for the freshest and local seafood and fish, some of it with a Peruvian twist like their great ceviches. It's open seven days for dinner. They also have happy hours seven days a week. You don't want to miss it. It's a great place. CorvinaBocaRaton.com for more information and reservations. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. We're back on the lunchbox. We're at Corvina Seafood Grill in Boca Raton, right at 110 Plaza Real. And, uh, yeah, it is a happening hot spot. We've got Chef Jeff Tunks. We've got the operating partner, Eddie Pizzoli, who you know from some other places around town. And uh, I have just taken my first bite of your fish dip, Chef, and I pronounce it fantastic. absolutely fantastic. It's got yeah, a it's good not too zing. bad AC. It's, it's, it's no, it's not. Nice. It's got the zing. I yeah, like the bagel more crisp of, is nice. I like the more of the vinegary yeah. zing. And uh, I apologize. It's been a long day. I said raisins. It's not raisins. It's grapes. It's I grapes, said yes. it's, it's, it's the walnuts, Waldorf. It's yes. the Waldorf salad. And then it's the hotel celery. in New York, right? Yes. Exactly. I was just around the corner from the Waldorf Astoria. Uh, staying at the Hotel Warwick, another oh, classic. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Huh? Hmm? yeah, it was nice. Um, but this is just as nice, having a little happy hour bite and libation here with y'all. Um, I'm going to get in down there. And I just, I guess, what's the inspiration in terms of, 
is it nice and liberating that if you want to put a new dish on the end menu and kind of uh, experiment and do some things it's uh, a little bit easier than maybe some of the bigger uh, yeah and i think and not you know not you know being like an italian restaurant or a french restaurant i mean just being a seafood restaurant you have a lot of you know you're not pigeonholed. You have a lot of avenues to go down different routes, you know, whether it be, you know, Latin American cuisine, you know, Asian influenced. We do have a couple know. of pasta dishes, though. We do have a couple of pasta dishes, you mm -hmm. know, because we, we felt that this part of Boca is very underserved with Italian food. <laughs> <laughs> That's sarcasm, folks. Um, but again, people love and pasta seafood. Pasta. Seafood yes. Yes. And what are you it, doing now? Like we're, a, we're doing a, we do actually a, a colossal crab, fra diablo, linguine with some, uh, some like grimolata breadcrumbs on top, which is one of our better sellers and stuff. You had and, me a colossal crab. That's right. There you go. Fra diablo, yeah, linguine. And, yeah. I, and I like, again, we talked about texture. I, you know, I, I make a uh, sort of a grimolata, which has got some Parmesan cheese, some mm. lemon zest, some parsley, mm. and some coarse toasted sourdough breadcrumbs on top. Oh. So I like that texture of pasta with that the breadcrumbs on top. You know, I love fish with grimolata too. Do you yeah. do any of that? Uh, yeah, it's something. It? Of course, that's a, a natural asobuco. So I, mean, yeah. I think a monkfish asobuco would be good with that risotto and maybe a little grimolata on top of that. Nice. So. It always cuts the fat a little bit of the grimace. This guy, CIA, he knows what this he's doing. Knows, it's, been yeah. around, it's been around the block. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, some fantastic stuff. This bagel crisp, I don't know how you I'm do telling it. telling you, the bagel crisp is it's, that it's is a light a crunch. Perfect conveyor belt for it's this. It's amazing how uh, we'll, we'll sell five fish dips a night, but go through like 75 <laughs> bagel crisps. <laughs> <laughs> People, can I get more bagel crisps? Can I get more bagel crisps with Corey? But no, we slice, we just, we buy local bagels. We slice them thin on the slicer. We buy our, just a regular bagel. Really? And then we make our own everything bagel seasoning. And then we just brush them with butter, put them on a, on a glazing rack in the oven. And then we bake them. You just slice them on a thin slicer? Uh -huh. yeah. Can I ask the source or no? Um, of what? The, the bagel? bagel. Uh, we buy them from Boca Bagel uh, right around the corner okay. here. So yeah, so that so it's just a regular, just a regular, regular plain bagel. So we don't buy an everything bagel, but we do our own seasoning yeah. on top right. of it. Then. We throw it on top and we just slice it thin and crisp right. it up. It's yep. nice. It makes a nice. Um, it's, it's more than better than just corn chips or whatever you can say. Yeah, it's nice. Well, it's a crunch, and but I it's think not sort of fix the theme of the smoked fish dip. So we put a little bit of which I love. I think was one economic. We use atomic horseradish here for our for our raw bar, and then mm -hmm. like, we put a touch of that to give that little zing along with our mayonnaise and fresh squeezed. That's what I detected a little, a little bit of that horseradish, just a little bit. Zing. Yeah, it's, that stuff and will send you for a loop. Yeah, it'll clear no. you out, which I you know, it's very healthy. It's good. It clears the sinuses. Yeah, and it's good for the blood stream. We've been to St. Elmo's in Indianapolis. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with yeah, their shrimp, cocktail. shrimp cocktail. Yeah. yeah. That'll clear you out. I was a sports writer. Yes. Anytime you were yeah, in Indianapolis, Indianapolis that's, yeah, you to that's, where, that's where they do the draft or the combine, you know, the scouting. So definitely. I think, was it, were you there that night we when you got, got muscled in. out? Jim Gray was got like the last table. They got bigfooted. Him and his uh, to this day, sports never radio go. partner yeah. were in Indianapolis. And we couldn't get in. Waiting for it was like the, It was the Super Bowl week. I mean. Well, it's always one of the top grossing restaurants in the yeah. country. And so it's they been there forever. They do a good job. They know what they're doing. I think they're number one consumers of shrimp for shrimp cocktail in the country. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every well, you have to have it, you know, type Which thing. you wouldn't think in the middle of nowhere yeah, right. or, or in the mid landlocked or Indianapolis. The plains, exactly, yes, but yeah. that's, uh, yes, the marvel of uh, overnight shipping. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make my way down there in a minute. But, Eddie, let's talk about, I mean, right now it's dinner service only, correct? Uh, correct, yep. Any thoughts of ever expanding it to the brunch, the, the weekend brunch? So, so the, I think in time, uh, East Boca has always been more of the dinner centric mm -hmm. area. They're out we, playing golf in the morning. Is that well, it? A, well, a lot of what it is Fishing is there's not many offices. Mm -hmm. there's, there's not a huge concentration of offices for people to go out on lunch breaks and have lunch meetings and all that kind of stuff at. And generally for lunch, Meisner Park kind of lends itself to more of the lunch walkable mall ish mm -hmm. kind of thing. So um, having a lunch here wasn't isn't the necessary it's just not priority. Cost effective. Yeah. However, uh, we're being told that a building what, no no more than 100 yards from us on the other side of Palmetto is being demolished, hopefully, by the end of the year to mm -hmm. make way for a beautiful new Class A office building. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. So um, actually, office buildings equals lunch crowds. Uh, exactly. Lunches. So, so mm -hmm. we're, we're really excited for the opportunity to potentially um, do that in the future. But right now, the focus for us is to have a killer happy hour and a, and a great dinner service. Where people can have phenomenal food, phenomenal fresh seafood, great service, and really just enjoy their time here. Sounds pretty good to me. So, um, yeah, Chef Jeff, I guess um, anything on the horizon for you in terms of just experimenting with other new flavors, dishes, or how do you stay current or, you know, in terms of uh, 
Well, I, I mean, I love to travel. I mean, I think, you know, our, you know, and I think any chef, you know, obviously I like to eat myself too, my, my, my stature, <laughs> so, tell. you know, <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, we you know I like, you know, I like to eat. I like to cook. I, I think by, you know, at my age, I think, you know, you know, it's now with the Internet and just looking at, you know, menus and traveling and absorbing different cultures and stuff is is the way I think we're always at least I am is still wanting to learn and, and, and still learning as we move along and stuff. But, you know, just, you know, we, we you know, keeping the thumb on the pulse of different varieties and species, you know, I'm so, you know, it's funny because coming from the Mid-Atlantic region for the last 25 years. And, you know, our first season of soft-shell crabs always come from down here. But soft-shell crabs is not a big thing down in Florida. No, I was going to say. It's, it's not. not. It's not. But, they, they, you know, they when, when the season starts, this is where they come from. You know, they migrate funny. up through Savannah and Brunswick right. and all the way to then the Chesapeake is when they finally, during the peak of, you know, August and September uh, and stuff. And we also have some fresh, great crab. And we do have a crab cake here, but I want to find a better source, you know, getting some really good sweet fresh jumbo lump coming mm. from the mid-atlantic region and stuff or even the gulf coast of of alabama and stuff yeah. but uh, i love a good soft shell crab po boy oh, i mean in new sandwich. orleans yeah oh yeah that's you know any you know fried oyster po boy and uh, the, the peacemaker favorite. and stuff like that but you know being having been fortunate enough to work in as we mentioned on all three coasts and and, and travel quite a bit you know we're, we're sourcing and trying to bring in and that's the thing we, we print our menu daily so we're not tied to anything that's laminated or you know and we're able to sort of react and, and adjust our price points very quickly and stuff. And, um, and that way we can bring in things and take things off that are moving and, and just constantly evolving, you know, yeah. which is great. And again, freshness is paramount, especially, so especially seafood. seafood yes, you so know. you're moving the product, it's seeing what, yeah, works, and it's, what you know, fortunately we're getting product, you know, basically almost seven days a week, you know, we keep everything very tight and that's a difficult thing. You know, we, we have a very big menu. We have a, you know, big raw bar program. We have sushi and stuff and we have like six or seven catches and, you know, the frustrating part, and I can see people come in and see halibut as a special, then all of a sudden by 8 o'clock we're out of the halibut, and people sort of realize, well, that's how it's it's fresh because yeah. tomorrow we're getting more halibut yep. in. So I'm not yep. ordering halibut for the week, and I'm not opening the freezer door to thaw out more halibut for tomorrow. You know, it's coming in fresh. We're cutting it fresh. We're hopefully selling it out that night. And, you know, they say fish is like company after three days. You know, yeah. so it's time to leave, <laughs> you know, so. And you know what else? They Well, I mean, <laughs> good fish isn't necessarily cheap and cheap fish ain't necessarily well good, all you have but, to do is go to whole foods and go through right. the seafood proper department right. and see you know why is that piece of swordfish costing me forty dollars or how about forty two dollars and things like that it's so. because you're getting quality fresh product right. and people have to understand that out there again on the group there's a lot of look i understand you know uh, money is tough. tight yeah, 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 and uh, obviously there's been some inflation but uh you know to run a restaurant to properly get the you know the preparation that you need and the, the labor that you need you know it, it, it costs a little money money but here you get the great values when you come out on a happy hour it you does. come out on a tower tuesday oh that's and, that's uh, that's like that's that by far is our our best deal ever because that's, that's probably ridiculous. my that's probably even my highest food cost without the discount right mm -hmm. you know right now i was you know i'm paying for example those last tuesday we had i'm, I'm getting irish point oysters from prince edward island they're a dollar 24 piece for me and that, that's each one open perfectly which is impossible right for each one's that, with that no spoilage no yeah. way exactly right, right. Uh, my one, my one pound lobster prices when you get a whole lobster per the full tower is 17.95 a pound right now for, for lobster well, and that's right. and, and most of them are over a pound so the average is about 21 dollars a piece mm -hmm. and colossal crab meat's about 40 dollars a pound so by the time you start adding all this up you get 12 shrimp 12 oysters a full lobster four ounce of colossal crab meat on a full tower you know it's probably you know that's it i'm coming every tuesday <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's Sorry, at least Eddie. 50 or 60 dollars worth of seafood that <laughs> you're getting for 80 dollars yeah. because right. it's half right. price or so you know so it's a great value. It's a good that. deal. Come on in, check it out on a Tuesday, and then come back on a weekend. Uh, what's been your, I guess, busiest nights are the typical Friday, Saturday? Yeah, yeah and the Tower Tuesday yeah, the has become good. I mean, this time of year, you know, we're, you know, every night's pretty good. I mean, good. Okay. But, yeah, the nights that we are, you know, we're pushing the 300 covers are definitely Friday and Saturday. Friday is, is sort of the is the perfect storm because we have a really busy happy hour that goes to seven o'clock. So you're getting that happy hour push along with, you know, the first wave of a la, a la carte diners and stuff. So, but yeah, so it's, it's good. I know we're going to take a break, but I wanted to ask you, um, you, and you brought up the group, but I, I, what I, what I want to touch on was a lot of time people will say, you can't find this here. You can't find that here. And as someone who I've traveled the world, I've traveled the country, you travel the country looking for food. I mean, that's, what you do, you've cooked around the country. 
What are your thoughts on not the clientele per se of South Florida, but the food scene? Because to me, over the years, I've been in New York. I've heard great things about Chicago. I've been to San Francisco. I love New Orleans. These are great food regions. Right. And I would, I can't wait to go back to them. But I'd put South Florida up with any of them. I mean, when you go from north to south to southern South Florida and the, the flavors we have and the taste we have and you guys, and I appreciate that you're embracing it and putting it here on the menu each and every day here at Corvina. What are your thoughts on the South Florida food scene overall? Well, I, I think, you know, I, I, think, I think it's it's great. I mean, it's really grown. I think, you know, a friend of mine, Fabio, just opened up Fiolina Pasta Bar over mm-hmm. here in Boca in the, in, the, in the little strip area, which I think is fantastic. And he did a great job down in Coral Gables. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are, are coming to Florida and opening concepts. I You know, for me, uh, you know, coming from Northern Virginia, D.C., which is such an ethnic hub, there's yep. some things I do miss. I mean, uh, I miss good dim sum that I, it's hard to, I have to drive for to go to. Yeah, yeah. there's and, a couple of places, you but know, there's really no Ethiopian. Not right, African, no Ethiopian. Yeah, you yeah, start talking to Ethiopian in yep. D.C. like that, you know, um, you but, know, really but, high end, great Vietnamese, um, you know, great Korean barbecue and stuff is really prevalent there. It all there. exists down but here. But I'm yeah. seeing it come. It's, 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 it's a little bit more spread out. You have, yeah. to, it's, you have to have wheels and yeah. you have to <laughs> have a good GPS <laughs> and you have to not be averse to you got to have a good name to tell you where to follow your group, right? It's great about that. Check out, you don't be afraid of some strip malls because there are some very unassuming places. But again, the diversity here is wonderful. And the diversity on this menu right here. that you exhibit at Corvina is right. uh, something to be appreciated. And we have good. Go and thank people, you know, because people, you know, think, you know, obviously Corvina seafood grill it resonates seafood. But we have, you know, we have a USDA Prime, right? New York strip. For the land steak. lovers, there are some people. We have three just... steaks in the menu. We have two different kinds. I think our jerk chicken will rival anybody's nice. jerk we chicken. Have a phenomenal. That's diet. our employee's really? favorite. That's our that's our employee's favorite meal that they okay. order. Yeah. Really? Stuff. Yeah. So well, you know, that's interesting. We do with uh, we do with ripe plantains and peas and rice and homemade nice. jerk. So that's something to consider. You could that's always right. come and check out some of well, a little the, bit of everything. If, if that's somebody's, what love. somebody's not a pescatarian in your group, you can always come to Corby yeah. and Seafood Grill and get uh, something to eat. That is good to know. And um, are you still doing the Brazilian seafood stew or is that? Yeah, we're doing the moqueca. Yeah, moqueca we're doing that. We do that. There. Yeah, we do that pretty authentic. You know, I had a contemporary Latin American restaurant called Saba in D.C. And we did right. some R&D trips down to. Um, the Bahia region, you know, Salvador and stuff and Brazil. And so, uh, you know, I go to the Boca market that's over in 441 to buy my Dinda oil and the Farofa for that. Okay. The Malagueta peppers, the whole deal. So we do the coconut milk and yeah. So it's our, you know, every, every, you know, nationality, whether it be Super de Peche man. or Bouillon <laughs> Base know, or I'm, the man knows his stuff. Them. He Believe knows me, to go I'm to 441. Yeah, <laughs> you know, great Brazilian markets and bakeries. Well, that's what I first did there. I mean, I went, to the, I went to all the farmers markets. You know, I've been to, you know, we have done a couple of dinners at Swank Farms with Jody out yeah, there and stuff and in a grain with job. that. Yep. Uh, you know, we buy our pita for Suzuki from Pita Pan Bakery, which mm-hmm. I think does a wonderful job also on 441. Mm-hmm. And there's one in Sunrise, I believe, the original store for nice. fresh pita and stuff. Nice. So, you know, I really immersed myself in the food community coming down here and just did a lot of R&D. Again, just, mad you know, respect for fantastic. a chef that's been around 40 years and he knows where to go and how to hunt out all these. Oh, he's going right, really all those, little, those little corner right. stories like, oh, I found this. I know yeah. that he's yeah. open. To, he wants yeah. to keep growing and learning. Like that's yeah. what's great about South Florida. The food scene to me is it's ever growing and it's learning and it's expanding and there's new you know populations coming in all the time depending on what the you know uh geopolitical and our staff is is, our staff is like a you know the un here i mean mean, we've got you know (laughs) and you have to get you know feedback off them Uh, you know of course dc we had a, a huge you know, Salvadorian community with pupusas and stuff, but oh. here, of course, you got the Haitian and Guatemala yep. and stuff. So you're always sort of, you know, Haitians get it with really, Rio. You know, yes, yeah, exactly. You got all kinds. <laughs> it's great. It is, uh, and I'm glad that you are open to. That's you know, great. Yeah, that's the way you learn. Incorporating all these yeah, ingredients yeah. in the menu here. Well, and it Corvina. makes the team, and it's something we've learned from Eddie. Great management, a great chef. You're incorporating everyone into it. Everybody gets engaged. They feel they a part in. of it. Yeah. yeah, it's all about the buy-in. And the I team. think we do a good job pairing our, our our beverage program with some of our influences too from the thing. You know, with the, the pisco sour and the yep, pepperina yep. and things yep, like yep, that. Yep. Also, pisco you know. sour even has a little mermaid. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's right. That's <laughs> why you can count nice, your drinks, nice. Mike. So it's, How it's, many so mermaids? Just save the mermaids. You know. We're still on one. Yeah. Jeff, we're gonna let you get back to the kitchen. Appreciate 
opportunity. We really to, appreciate you uh, this has been fantastic. Yeah, stopping by and visiting. Sure. I look forward to yeah. getting back out here more often. Yeah, and, I can't uh, wait. Again, the, you know, kudos, a uh, great job on the menu, on, you know, the $10 bites on the happy hour yeah. menu, and that's seven <laughs> days a week, which is outstanding. That's amazing. It, yes, that's and, great value. Uh, and we'll have Eddie sticking around because we'll wrap up the show after these words on the lunchbox from Corvina. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Food from a scratch kitchen, delicious drinks and house-made spirits from a craft bar, a great vibe inside and out with a spacious patio. I'm talking about Batch New Southern Kitchen and Tap Fort Lauderdale in the heart of the city at 525 North Federal Highway. It's open seven days for lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch with classics like fried chicken and waffles and shrimp and grits and creative items like pecan-crusted salmon and a fried green tomato BLT. And the drinks smooth sipping and so good there's convenient free parking and a garage next door happy hour at the bar an entire patio four to seven monday to friday and live music every wednesday thursday and friday it's pet and people friendly and with cozy fire pits for when the temperature dips for reservations and more information go to batchsouthernkitchen.com hey it's mayo here for delaware chicken farm and seafood market since 1951 for over 70 years the home of freshness. I've been a customer for over three decades, and it's the place to go for poultry, steaks, meats, and of course, their unbelievable selection of fish and seafood. They've got it all. Key West pink shrimp, grouper, snapper, lobster, and of course, Florida stone crab claws of all sizes. Don't forget their famous fish dip and a full selection of prepared foods. It's located at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood, just across from the Seminole Classic Casino. Doug Carter and crew will take great care of you. Make sure to check out their weekly specials and daily catch online at DelawareChicken.com. Quality, value, freshness, that's the Delaware way. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. If you like seafood in a comfortable setting, outdoors, even keel fish shack at the corner of A1A and Commercial Boulevard in Lauderdale by the Sea, and also now with a new location on Las Olas Boulevard. Those are my spots. Upscale food and a down-home setting. The chef owners, Dave and Brad, do a terrific job with all the seafood classics that you want. They have the best grilled oysters in town, bang-bang shrimp, lobster rolls, and daily fish specials. They also have weekend brunch Saturday and Sunday. They have daily happy hour, 4 to 7. And they also have other weekly specials like mussels on Monday and oysters on Tuesday, go to Even Keel Fish Shack and tell them that the Lunchbox sent you. Great Italian food in a beautiful beachfront setting. Have I got the place for you? Casa Calabria at the Ocean Manor Resort, 4040 Galt Ocean Drive in Fort Lauderdale. Highly rated across all the restaurant review platforms and totally Mike Mayo's Lunchbox approved. Delicious, authentic Southern Italian food in a cozy dining room overlooking the Atlantic. Live music in the lounge, full bar, and a great wine list. Owner Frank Talrico takes great pride in his family recipes from his native Calabria. Fresh fish and seafood, veal, housemade pastas, and marinara sauce as smooth as silk. You gotta try the imported meats and cheeses on the antipasto platters, and don't miss that ricotta gnocchi. Fluffy little pillows straight from heaven. Casa Calabria, open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday, closed on Mondays. Tell them the lunchbox sent you. Hey, it's Mike Mayo. When the Brooklyn boy in me wants a good bagel with Nova or some matzo ball soup, homemade knishes, or a great deli pastrami sandwich on rye, you know where I go? Grandpa's Cafe in Dania Beach. It's been around a long time, an institution, but a little over a year ago, a pair of New Yorkers came in, bought it, and refurbished the place. It's beautiful, and they are now serving great breakfast, brunch, lunch. They've got the omelets. They've got Eggs Benedict. They've got all kinds of great baked goods like Ruggleich. Grandpa's is just off Federal Highway on Southwest 1st Street in Dania Beach. It's open seven days. Go in there. Tell them that the lunchbox sent you. We're back on the lunchbox. I'm caught with my mouth full, having a little bit of that salmon roll, the maki uh, sushi. Beautiful. Everything here is beautiful. Fantastic. I just had a bite during the break of the uh, crab rangoon inside out on the chip. Mm -hmm. I like that, though, because a lot of the time, like, again, I'm not as big as much as the show may uh, show. Otherwise, I'm not actually the biggest eater. And a lot of the time when you get the crab rangoon, it's too much. So this, I like, again, and I really like Good chef flavor. a lot. I, it's really creative because 
this is light and airy the shell instead mm -hmm. of overwhelming. A lot of time it's fried and it's yeah, heavy. Deep fried, yeah. This is light and airy the shell on its own, and you can ladle out however much you want, so you don't have to overdo it. And then again, the same thing with the sauce. Like I, I, it was very. I've never seen it that way, and it's the most I've ever enjoyed a crab rangoon. It, and it's it also to... shareable too. Mm -hmm. That's the best. That's the best part about this stuff is you're coming for happy hour, like. You know, a lot of places will do a happy hour, but like you can't even share the food nah. they do. So this is like, you know, this can be shared by anybody. I want to $10, just get no, a bunch of them. And yeah. when I see that dish, it, it reminds me almost when you go to a Mexican restaurant and you get the queso fundido, which yeah. everybody loves to share. And this is only, it's a seafood, you know, version where you got this nice, beautiful dip, crab, a little bit of cheese, put it on this crisp. And you know what? It's amenable to an ASMR right too. Hold on ASMR. a second. Wow. <laughs> Everybody, you know, we're getting that. It's happy hour time. <laughs> have to kind of get mellow out. I, I may have to really go into we this. You really enjoy doing this. I like that. This is weird. You know, it weirds me out a lot, does doesn't it? it? <laughs> he he so, swears it's not romantic. Which is worse. <laughs> but he gets really Eddie into Pizzoli, it. Eddie <laughs> I have to ask, is somebody who's seen it all, what's weirder, the Mayo Big Bite? Or the mayo <laughs> definitely the ASMR is way better. Definitely definitely <laughs> the big bite might be grosser, but this is weird. <laughs> soothing sensations now as I bite into the. I'll let Eddie move over. <laughs> it's going to be the next Spotify channel. Mike, Honestly, Mike, Mike mayo like, biting mayo, into I, different things. I'm really thinking of diversifying our YouTube channel and just having Mayo do this because he gets really into it. Um, another thing, and I'll let you. I don't do it. Hey. Let me do it. No, I'm going for your ASMR. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> I love them. Uh, and <laughs> Chef Jeff brought this up, and it's true. One problem, my problem with nachos when they bring out a big nacho, and it's overwhelming. You get lots of chips, but it's more chips than actual stuff. I love that he actually specifically said we did it this way because I hate the fact that it's not evenly spread out. Oh yeah, and you literally put it in the skillet so that the shrimp, the cheese, the jalapenos, the peppers, whatever's on there is touch, evenly it spread. Touches every chip, so and nobody's getting left. Uh, Left out there. Yeah, have you tried I think it? that's cooled off enough it where is, you and could I can actually it. lift it. And exactly. uh, you got to try. And I'm going to spare people. I bet it's you know, chip like this is probably still crunchy, but I'm not going to go in that uh, it's got a direction. To it. Here we go. And I love, I love seeing all the jalapenos. You know, yep. me. I love. I took mine off spices. because I'm a wuss, but I left them for you. Yeah. Ah, it's good. It's and really it, yeah, nice, right? When you get it hot and fresh, and it's uh, ten dollars mm -hmm. during the happy that's hour. Right. That is uh, the way it's meant to be. Yep. Um. How's the happy hour crowd? I mean, it usually picks up about six o'clock or so. Yeah, or? usually, you know, five thirty um, starts to get busy, and then you know that six to seven is like the power mm -hmm. hour for happy hour. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people coming in early for their dinner reservations, and maybe grab a cocktail before they sit down for dinner. And then, like Chef Jeff was saying, on Friday nights, it's like a perfect storm because you know you've got seven o'clock approaching. Everybody's at happy hour on Fridays, so. You get those last minute orders in six fifty five. Everybody 6 wants that. Yeah, yeah. They want Let that. me get three more cocktails. <laughs> and like, then the food that's bad form people. And, and then we've got the you know the, the first turn of tables. That's when entrees start coming out. So yep. you know that's like the that 15, 20 minutes for them yep. is like it's the, the, it's the critical, not so golden uh, hour. It's yeah, the golden it's, hour if you're here you know drinking and enjoying all these great deals. Exactly. But for the staff, gets a little it's, stressful. I meant to ask. So what is proper? etiquette like for me if i go to a place that a happy hour goes from let's say five to seven i try to come in at six i have myself a nice cocktail i order one and then you know maybe order another one at 6 30 and then okay 6 50 6 55 you if you want to get the third one mm -hmm. in and you're not the driver and you can have an uber or lyft i'll do that but people that come in at 6 50 <laughs> Get and like order the three drinks. <laughs> so we have a we have got a policy at the restaurant. If you if you come in, you order the drinks. They're going to be made for you. So if you feel that you must get that drink discounted, it's going to be watered down mm -hmm. by the time you begin to drink it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, 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 and yeah. we you know that we don't back up. I guess yeah, is what yeah, they call yeah, backup yeah. people for drinks after mm -hmm. seven o'clock. So right. it's like they punch it in the computer exactly. and then they tip the guy. Yeah, because the computers but... change at seven o'clock. So yep. it, it doesn't happen a ton of times. But what we tell what we tell all of our employees to do is at six forty five or five forty five on the weekends, go around the bar, go yep. to your high last, tops, last happy let hour. them know, hey, 
Happy hour is going to be ending. But it's a like? cat and mouse game, Eddie. Don't people come in and say, I'll just have three whiskeys neat, and then that way the ice isn't diluting the drink? <laughs> you know, it's it's few and far, yes. Uh, the, the short answer. That's me. He's that's being like, nice. <laughs> He's like, yes, of course. The, the short answer is yes. We're in South Florida. Of course that happens. Trying to make everybody can, of course. <laughs> like, I mean, he's uh, born and raised. He's been here his whole life. He knows how Florida is. I'm, like, I'm not going to lie. It happens. But <laughs> the, if, if it happened a lot, then, right. then I would make it an issue. Mm. But it doesn't happen much at our restaurants. Not to say it doesn't yeah. happen elsewhere. It's all um, about the mindfulness. Just be mindful. Like, it. you know, come on out. They're giving you a deal. Don't take advantage of it. Otherwise, you know, then they're going to have to start changing things. They want to be able to offer the happy hour seven yeah. days a week. That's they're what you want to do. We, we want people to come and we want people to enjoy, have great discounted drinks, have, try our food, try yep. great stuff. Because maybe you come for happy hour one day and you're like, oh, oh my God, this blew my mind. Yep. I need to come back. For come back, have a meal. Yep, yeah. Yeah. There so, are limits, people. Just again, be be a good customer, be a good guest. <laughs> we're we're in the um, hospitality business. I mean, I've seen a couple of posts over the past couple of days, obviously on on Let's Eat, with you know people that are in the business complaining about the way guests treat them and and whatnot. And, I missed and some of it. I was on vacation. I it, I took a blissful uh, it got pretty respite. Contentious. I was Did reading it. it. I'm like, <laughs> really? Let's eat contentious. Yeah. You know, right. Right. <laughs> Let me clutch my pearls and say I would never. I'd never exactly. think that would happen. You know. It, 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 I, I look at that in, in both ways, though. It's it's you know we're in hospitality, so you can't forget that we're going to do everything we can to try to make you happy. Right now, when you reach that point where there's no making you happy, yeah, yeah. And then maybe us, it's time to look in a mirror and say maybe it's not the restaurant that's the exactly. problem. Exactly, and and I you know it it only it doesn't get to that point often, but our management team, I tell them, you know, if you get to that point. There's, you know, there's being a human and there's not being a human. Right, when yeah. you're not being a human, you need to stand up for your team and yep. yourself. Right. And they all totally understand that. They take ownership of it. They're going to do whatever they can to make you happy. But, you know, the moment the curse words are thrown out or they, yeah. you know, disrespect. or there's a blatant disrespect. Right. That's when. No, no, that's kind of it's like, OK, not tolerated. No, that is and, not and, cool. And, you know, they're they're working hard here. We're in the middle of season yep. and not not everything's going to go great every single day. It's you just know? the it's facts business. of life. Yeah. Yep. And so. again, restaurants are living, breathing organi organisms fueled by living, breathing humans. Yep. So humans sometimes make mistakes sometimes well if you again, want someone to treat sick. you with respect treat them with respect and that's it you can be frustrated and still be a human being yeah yes. we're, we've got at this restaurant we're about 70 employees okay wow. uh prezo we're a little over 90 okay uh prezo palm beach gardens we're about 75 wow so, so you, these you are know, big staffs and where again. we've got a lot of people that rely on on us you know on our, our guests having a good experience right. they want to make sure that everybody's leaving here happy because this is how everybody pays their bills yep and so, i say be reasonable be fair. And this goes, you know, both ends. I mean, restaurants have to be reasonable with their yes, customers yes, yes. and not, you know, gouge their eyes out. Yep. And that's why you see Tower Tuesdays here, which yep. I think is a spectacular idea. Credit to you for uh, I got to give here. it to my wife. That was yeah. that's, that's her idea. Christina, her. I like it. Up, good for her. That's a great idea. She, we, we work very well together. She's my nice. uh, yin to the yang or that's yang good. to the yin. That's great. It's Christina, the great Christina. The right. great Christina. Yeah. One always day she'll good. be on the show. Nice. Ah, we'll get, we'd yeah. love to. We always like to see. Uh, yeah. She's uh, a fan uh, of the group. Anybody who's Mike's not even a fan of the group. I hate you people. No, I'm just kidding. We love you, but he gets stressed out by you. <laughs> well, when you wake up to what? 80, co 80, yeah, 80 different all the comments in the morning. Well, yeah, yeah. It's 80 new posts and 80 different comments. And then all the, well, nobody wants to hear my problems. I get paid to eat. So exactly. um, it's all good. Eddie, always good to see you. We got to take one more, one more break. break, my friend. Uh, we're going to, again, uh, this show will air sometime again in April because uh, both me and Luby are going to be going away. And then next month, maybe we'll get into Prezzo again. Uh, yeah. or Whatever you want, Eddie. Uh, your yes. wish is our we command because we aim to please here on the Lunchbox. Uh, hospitality. Yes, we're also is. in the hospitality business. Let's take our last uh, break, and then we'll wrap up this special happy hour edition of the Lunchbox from Corvina Seafood Grill in Boca Raton to me and say, Mike, where should I go out to eat? I got guests coming from out of town. Where should we go? Cafe Seville. That's the answer. 2768 East Oakland Park Boulevard. It's a Fort Lauderdale perennial. 
serving the finest in Spanish and continental cuisine in a cozy, friendly, comfortable setting. Joey Esposito and Sally, his better half, they've been running the place for a long time. It's been open since the 1980s. They got great Spanish classics like paella, shrimp with garlic sauce, and all kinds of great seafood dishes. The stuffed veal chop, oh, that's my favorite. Go to Cafe Seville. It's open every day but Sunday at 5 p.m. for dinner. Tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defoe sent you. Do you like burgers? Do you like wings? Do you like late night food and sports on big screen TVs and cold beer and friendly vibe and great people? Then you want to check out Shenanigans, 1300 South Federal Highway in Dania Beach. Go to Shenanigans, you get yourself all the good stuff, the fresh fish every day, the black and grilled wings, and of course the kitchens are open late. Go there, tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defoe sent you. For an exquisite sushi experience, Kaizen Sushi Bar and Grill in Fort Lauderdale is the place to go. 5640 North Federal Highway, just north of Commercial Boulevard. Chef owner Hui Lam, he's a sushi savant, slicing and serving pristine fish and seafood flown in directly from Japan and around the world. Nigiri, sashimi, special rolls, and omakase dinners. He's ruined me from going anywhere else. It's that good. Open seven days for dinner and also for lunch on weekends. Even if you're not a sushi fan, they have great cooked options, including steaks, chops, rice and noodles, and other Japanese dishes. It's fantastic. For reservations and information, go to kaizenflorida.com. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. Delicious Mexican food with innovative twists. Margaritas with a medley of tongue-tingling flavors. I'm talking about Taco Craft, Taqueria, and Tequila Bar. The place to go on Taco Tuesday and every day. It's located at 510 North Federal and Highway in Fort Lauderdale and also in Lauderdale-by-the-Sea at Plantation Walk and soon in Coral Springs. Taco Craft has specials every day, including bottomless drinks for a Sunday brunch and Taco Tuesdays with their $4 premium tacos, including their new Berea tacos with bone marrow broth. Oh, it's so good. They've even made a taco lover out of me, and they've got so much more, including fajitas, that open face smashed cheeseburger tortilla that's new, and a guacamole sample that's an explosion of flavors. Kitchen is open late. There's delivery and takeout. For more information, go to tacocraft.com. Tell them Mike Mayo, the Lunchbox sent you. All right, we're back on Corvina, and uh, Eddie stuck around. We stuck around a little overtime. That's what happens when you get really passionate people and uh, Chef Jeff Tunks. I mean, unbelievable. 40-year yes. veteran, hospitality pro, that CIA trained. great. I, I'm already a huge fan of Chef And, uh, Jeff. yeah, I can't wait to get back here for another full dinner, and we'll be back here more in the yeah, future. Sure. Uh, next month, maybe we'll go check out Prezo yeah. again. Yeah, in, we uh, love ourselves in West Prezo. Boca. And, of course, that's on uh, Military Trail. Our military, just north of Yamato. And then we have uh, Palm Beach Gardens. Yep. Off of so, Sarni, maybe Yamato. we'll find our way to Palm Beach Gardens. I don't know Palm Beach if he wants to get booming. us down there. But Jupiter, our friend Sarni Gardens. wants us to get down there. So, we, we may I, okay. have I'm to gonna, oblige him. I'm going to name <laughs> drop again. But I had a fantastic lunch yesterday at Le Bernardin. Uh, not yesterday, two days ago. But... One of the guys who was helping on the service team mentioned we were from South Florida. He goes, my father lives in Jupiter. And I mentioned, you know, how the food scene. He says, yeah, the food scene down there is booming. There. And I told him, you got to go PGA. got to go check out Prezzo and Palm Beach Gardens. Check out our friend uh, Pushkar at Stage. I mean, it's just the, the whole the whole South Florida scene, like you mentioned, Luby, it's just booming. Yep. Everywhere you go, there is good food. And, and I appreciate find Eddie it. for finding a chef who embraces that mentality. Yeah, it's all good. All right, Eddie Pizzoli, as usual, a pleasure to sit, chat, and eat and drink uh, here at Corvina Seafood Grill. One. 10 Plaza Real. Am I pronouncing it right? It's not Plaza Real. It's Plaza Real, Real Plaza. Real. 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 South. Okay. Plaza Real South. South. Plaza Real South. Uh, you'll find it. It is a fantastic place for dinner seven nights a week with happy hours seven days a week. That's crazy. Come check it out. Meanwhile, we'll see everybody uh, tomorrow, Thursday. We will be at Even Keel. Nice. More fish. Uh, <laughs> more fish, but casual can't get setting. enough of it, yeah. Lauderdale by the Sea. Original location. Dave and Brad, they also do an excellent job. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Yes. More than enough to go around. And, and people love it. it. And we're in South Florida. Why not embrace the fresh bounty of the sea? Yes. You can find it here. Corvina Seafood Grill. All right, Eddie. Thanks a lot. Thank Until you, guys. Then, Appreciate you. Enjoy every tuna taquito. I'm going to down this one in another go. big bite. Have at it. <laughs> and you couldn't resist. Every sandwich. <laughs>